this is big. A colossal win in Hartlepool for the Conservatives and Boris Johnson. Another blue brick in what used to be Labour's red wall. And the Tories are building right across the country. <laughs> Big boss man. A normal sized boss man here too. He thinks he knows what voters want. I think what the, this uh, election shows is that uh, people want a, a party and a government that is focused on them, focused on delivering change. And that's what uh, Jill has been campaigning on. And that's why I, I, I go on, uh, Beth, about the advantages of the, of the things that we're doing. You said in the 2019, you, after the 2019 elections, people in the Red Wall had lent you their vote. Do you think now something else has happened? This is a deeper shift. Is that your hope? Well, I hope that I think that what I think what happened in in 2019 was that people mandated us to get Brexit done and to to begin the process of uniting and, and levelling up. And I think that what's happened now is they can see we did get Brexit done, and to a certain extent they can see that we delivered uh, on that. And I think what people want us to do now is to get on with delivering on everything else. Eleven years into power, the Conservatives still eating into Labour's territory. And that did Win in Northumberland in the northeast. Dudley, Redditch, Nuneaton in the West Midlands. Ben Houchen, the Conservative Party candidate, is duly elected as mayor for the Tees Valley Combined Authority. Thank you. And holding the Tees Valley mayoralty with an increased margin. Places Labour was supposed to be fighting back. These defeats really hurt. None more so than in Hartlepool. People here had voted Labour for over six decades, but no more. Boris Johnson's Brexit dividend is still paying out, not just here, but across the country. From Northumberland to Nuneaton, the Conservative vote share went up the most in areas that voted decisively to leave. Votes lent in 2019 now being freely given. But it suggests something more than just Brexit too, something more profound about the redrawing of our political map. Over the past couple of decades, working class voters have gradually turned away from Labour. England has gradually turned blue in all but our major cities, while in Scotland, people have turned to the SNP and it all leaves Labour at a loss. Whilst the PM tours new Conservative territory for the Labour leader, nowhere to go but the office. I'm bitterly disappointed in the results um, and, you know, I take full responsibility for the results and I will take full responsibility for fixing things. We have changed as a party, but we haven't set out a strong enough case to the country. Very often we've been talking to ourselves instead of to the country, and we've lost the trust of working people, particularly in places like Hartlepool. I intend to do whatever is necessary to fix that. But not everyone in the Labour Party agrees on what the fix is. Sir Keir now under pressure to do things very differently. It's a pretty disastrous result. It's one that we were expecting. And really, Keir now has to learn lessons from it. He has to reset the button, press the reset button, so that he can go back to the very issues that he was elected to lead the Labour Party on, which were radical policies. Keir Starmer has always said he could turn around Labour's fortunes in time for the next election, but that journey yet to even get going. These results cause for real alarm.